we made it this far, so and we have lots to talk about, so we're going to get right down to it today. We have Jonathan Keith, founding member of Team JK, and we have Jay Granieri, real estate advisor extraordinaire, oh, in the hot seat today. Love yes. it. Hot. Extraordinaire. Running hot. In the hot seat today. Fancy words. Um, <laughs> you asked me to spell it. So you, you guys are going to talk real story team JK. Mm. Oh, now you took all the, the steam out of me there. Oh. That's exactly right. So we're going to talk about the South Florida real estate market, right? We're going to talk about how we made it through Q1. Um, and we're going to hear your predictions for the rest of 2020. But we got a completely set of different circumstances, different than anyone could have pre predicted or imagined. So um, we know that you two are two of the hardest working real estate professionals in South Florida. Mm. And before we get your thoughts on the real estate, on the market, I've prepared a few questions because I think everybody wants to know a few things. So we're going to ask those questions first. Everybody needs to know this is unrehearsed. These guys have no idea what I'm going to ask them. <laughs> Chris, Lord. you're laughing Lord. there. Lord. Um, uh -oh. So... Let's 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 jump right into that, Brittany. Um, we can stop sharing the screen there, and we're gonna just go to to J.K. and Jay here first. Um, Chris, if you can stop sharing video for a second too, we're just gonna I'm gonna ask these questions in the background with the video, so we can we can watch these two in action. So the first question, we'll make it nice and easy. What's your favorite thing about being a Compass agent? Ooh, this question. That's the J or JK? Yeah. Who That's, that, let, let, let's hear from JK first. Yeah, JK. Well, I think one of the biggest moves, the decision-making moves that I wanted to take on for coming to Compass was, you know, jumping on the technology train. And clearly, that was a really good decision when it came down to being right here in the middle of a pandemic and and where technology is right in the midst of taking over uh, almost everything when it comes to business. So if I would say for sure the technology game, I was known for saying I got off the Amtrak and got on the bright line when it came to high speed um, from where we were. We, and we caught a lot of we caught a lot of flack for that one, too, by the way. Yeah, yeah, we caught, <laughs> caught some flack, but you know, it was reality. And, yeah. uh, and, I, and I felt, and I think that even the team realized, you know, where we were and where we were going, we just needed to be supported in a, in a much stronger arena. And I think the Compass was willing to do that. So outside of the technology, because everybody's like, what technology, where? We don't see it, mm -hmm. what is it? Well, I mean, outside of that technology and the, the concierge configuration, the bridge loan configuration, those different services, the Compass platform and their CRM, whether they use or don't use, you know, Compass typically focuses on hiring their support staff are, are, are truly the professionals of professionals in their business, whether it's marketing, advertising, um, you know, admin, uh, sales management, I needed all of that, Derek, to, to really induce into the team. So it wasn't all on my back. Uh, my background's managing. So I don't want to, I don't want to manage a brokerage. I want to sales manage a team. So the buyers, sellers, landlords, and tenants get the utmost top notch service that they deserve in our community. Awesome. Okay, Jay, do, do you want to add anything to that? What's I mean, that's, that's a good answer. Um, you know, one of the things that really attracted me to Compass was the uh, was the culture. Um, so I came, you know, not everybody was born into real estate, like Jonathan. And uh, <laughs> you were and, made for it, though. Uh, I wasn't made for it, but I wasn't born into it. So I, I worked for a lot of like, um, like smaller startup companies and some bigger startup companies before I got into real estate. And one of the things I loved about it was that sort of collaboration amongst a bunch of sort of entrepreneurial spirits and compass. I mean, they recruit the best of the best, right? I mean, at the end of the day, what's a brokerage really made of it's, it's professional realtors from different areas that, you know, found a home and compass had a unique selling proposition that really encouraged some of the best agents to come over 
Um, and, and what they do is they really, they obviously look at production, but they look at the, they look at the person as well too. And it has to fit the corporate culture of what Compass is all about. Uh, it, our company's based out of New York. Um, and it is, a, I mean, if you've ever been to any of the offices up in New York, there's like 1200 agents, each one, and they are the top agents in New York. And they just carried that, yeah. that attitude, that bravado, um, that collaboration, you know, we have a great support staff, um, different than other companies that, that we've been with, uh, that I know that Jonathan's been with. And, um, it, it was a unique opportunity to work amongst yeah. a bunch of people that really had a lot of tools and things that they offered us. Um, yeah. you know, everybody about, has their own model. Yeah. Everybody has their own business platform. Um, and, and they work differently. There's agents out there that do amazing production by themselves. They don't need anything. Right. And meanwhile, their, their lifestyle is completely like out of control as far right. as right. being able to balance. And, and that's the key, you know, as an example, we're on Jay's point, you know, with culture, you know, we, we I was on the phone. I've seen our CEO, uh, Robert Refkin every week. Yeah. Uh, and he's yeah. chimed yeah. in on, uh, he's chimed in on our, on our massive hundred agent, 200 agent and state, you know, few hundred agent calls out of the blue, you know, he's got, you know, I think he's uh, in the 15,000 agent range to pay attention to. And, and um, so I don't know if, we're, if maybe we're just the lucky ones he happens to pop in on and say hello, but the leadership I think was where we needed to be at and what we needed for the team. We needed good top leadership to make sure that our products and services were, were different than everybody else's. Um, and that's what I needed to find. We can, we can do the average game. We already have that handled doing average business with, you know, the average world out there with people who don't need, you know, top notch service. We're able to do everything at the utmost from A to Z on, on, on making sure the I's are dotted and T's are crossed and they're getting different and more options for products to offer out there. Yeah. That's key. Yeah. yeah, the tools for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so best of the best. That That's good concept to go on here. Speaking of best of the best, okay, JK. If you and Jay were to arm wrestle right now, who would win? Oh, come on. I don't know. See, I'm pretty burly, <laughs> but he's got... <laughs> he would have gone last I'll give, I'll give him a second. Of... Got, so for the ladies, Jay's got stamina, but I've got immediate power. Oh, <laughs> right. Wow. Okay. Wow. Good answer. Good Woo! answer. Let it out. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. And this is, we always make fun of this is Jay and I love to bike ride together. It's yeah. one of our new things. And this was kind of like a Corona thing. I actually sold my road bike because I didn't think I'd pick up uh, road biking ever again. And, uh, and I got back into it during, uh, during right when uh, Corona hit. So Jay and I were writing and I told Jay, listen, you might be able to beat me for the most part, but there is a point when you can't. And that's when we're going downhill because you can't fight the law of inertia. <laughs> I mean, JK was JK actually opened up JK's gym. It was the first gym. I think that still it was the last surviving gym before we actually shut everything down. Right. Right. So I, got my, I got my last workout in before, uh, before, it all got the uh, yeah out. yeah Phoebe's been really upset about that because yeah it was Phoebe's playhouse that's like her little area on the side of her bedroom where I have um yeah I've got like a little artificial turf laid out in her clubhouse that we built and she walks out one day and she goes daddy you need to move your weights and I'm like why <laughs> she goes this is my clubhouse right, I'm like, oh right. I know. I so know. I clapped some flag from her on that that was great that was great so Jay, we so now we know you like to work out. Mm -hmm. You like long walks on the beach, right? You like moonlit dinner, romantic dinner, very dinner romantic. under the moonlight, very, right? Very romantic. Okay. Uh, See, so you should have said that. How did you and JK meet? <laughs> oh wow! Good. Oh, nice. <laughs> we're, going back, we're going back in the archives. Yeah, man, you gotta um, dig deep. I, I'm trying to think about when we met. You know, I left Maz. Maz did. I left my wife at a table and he came up and hit on her. And, um, <laughs> no, have, you uh, seen what, have you seen Jay's wife? She's gorgeous. No, she, uh, no it was uh, actually a mutual friend of ours um, here in Jason Fort Myers. At that time, I, like I mentioned before, I, I was working in a different industry and, um, and I was, you know, I was, a, I was a, you know, a road warrior flying in and out of Fort Lauderdale. And, um, 
but you know, happened to be in town that time and a good friend of ours, Jason Mosden, introduced us. I think I, I think it was Kitchenetta. Kitchenetta. Yeah, it was Kitchenetta, yeah. Right down um, the street from my house. That's crazy. That's so, our yeah. center point. We I know, right? I know, I know. So yeah, Pretty we had a bit, we had a big group uh dinner and um you know it was true love after that. So yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. actually, you know what, what was funny is I Jay was talking about getting a real estate. He's like, JK, right. you know, let's let's have a real chat about the kind of business yeah. you do. And I'm like, well, hey, I've been in this business for a long time. I've my background's appraising. You know, so it's not just like your typical agent that's going right. about doing, you know, your onesie and twosie deals over here. I mean, the the amount of uh, the amount of community efforts we put together pre J were were substantial at that time, and then yeah. you know, pushing forward, Jay and I've been able to you know do a lot for the community, do a lot of business, and ultimately, you know, he um, he's just really found his place and. Yeah, it was a good, it was a good, it was a good, uh, it was good timing. You know, I had just happened to have uh, my daughter. Uh, Jenny was pregnant with my daughter and it was, um, it was, she was only, I think about one years old at the time and the traveling was getting too crazy. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I had some hard to hard talks with Jonathan about yeah. it, but I'll tell you, you know, this is, it's actually an interesting story because, you yeah. know, we battle one of the biggest things that we battle with, not to turn a, 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 a past history story, how we met into sort of a, a lesson learned, but mm-hmm as a young realtor kind of coming in thinking that I could dabble still in my old job and play realtor on the side and, or, and practice real estate on the side. Um, I was, you know, mis- you know, very clearly mistaken. It was a very hard thing to do. And, and yeah. we went through some tough times. I yeah. Was, it's I, interesting. I was, when Jay came in, I didn't want him to come in because I knew he only wanted to do a part-time. I said, I'm yeah. going to pass. Yep. Cause yep. I just didn't want to create issues with our friendship. But I think probably the true bond with Jay and I, uh, you know, I have to, I can't even like turn my back on it. I know a lot of people always wonder, well, why are you guys so close? How mm-hmm. have you guys been able to put up with each other this long, mm-hmm. uh, especially doing business? I mean, because business relationships fall apart all the time. We see mm-hmm. it, all of the partnerships just are very difficult to maintain. And I think probably the biggest, you know, tie between Jay and I was, was the organic friendship that we put together with with him having chloe um yeah. and, and and then Cruz. i mean i just fell in love with chloe um yeah. Yeah. at that point i didn't have you know kids at, at that time so watching jay being an am- amazing father was was really that that we had a tie with our friend jason our mutual friend jason mm-hmm. but the bond was seeing what an amazing father jay was and that's where I want to be. So when you guys are seeing me with Phoebe, you're actually seeing, you know, the bond of what I'm mimicking from Jay. Mm. As much as maybe when you're watching Jay in real estate, I'm watching Jay as dad. Mm. You know, when Jay to me in real estate, I'm in to him and is or vice versa, you know. Yeah. But you know, the mentor the mentorship tie in between friendship and mentor was extremely important at that time in my life and still goes forward to this day. And you just gotta be humble, uh, and you gotta you gotta be open and honest with each other. And yeah. that's what that's what the relationship that Jonathan and I have. Yeah, I mean, there is a true love. I would do anything for his family, uh, and I know that he would do the same. And and that's tough. It's it's tough in these times to to have that kind of friendship. And that's why we try to, we do everything we can listen, Jay and I've, we've scrapped before and, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we've had, you know, tough business decisions to, to work through. And, um, and, but I know that ultimately him and I, I think the key to that friendship and that partnership is understanding that, you know, we both, our intent, the intentions are there to be right. We want to do the right thing. You know, that's, that's the key factor. And then all the nuances and challenges outside of that are really just secondary scenarios that we just work through, you know, and ultimately here's the real truth of the matter is as, as realtors and agents in general, if we can't figure out how to get along with each other, then we really need to question whether we should be in the business at all, because that's really our goal is to bring both a buyer and seller together that a good portion of the time in as much as you know, this digital phase and technological phase is rolling where they feel like they 
might be able to figure out how to circumvent being or circumvent a realtor relationship with a buyer or seller. I can tell you on multiple occasions this year alone where a click of a button would not have put a deal in closing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Jonathan, Jay, the, the, this is great because at the end of the day, people end up working with people they like, right? That's you guys exactly are right. sharing, you're sharing the, the side that the team, all of us have got. He's cuter and I'm likable. I'm more likable. <laughs> right. He's cuter. It's like a big okay, bear. Okay, so on, on that note, who's got the better beard? Oh, oh, well, oh you know, I'm, I'm beating that one. I don't know. Oh, so if you, if, if you can look back in the archives of photographs of Jonathan and I, very few you ever see of us having, you know, wearing our beards our, at the uh, same time. Yeah, our stay at home beards. And this is the this is forty seven years of a beard. I've I've always pretty much ran clean shaven. Yeah, I may have had a little longer hair, but but in general, this is kind of this is my covered beard. So I would say I like to go on record. Jonathan is older than I am, but I think I definitely bear <laughs> I bear more gray. I think I bear more gray. So I don't know. <laughs> and I don't right, color. I don't color. Something? Somebody was calling me out about coloring my hair or beard, and I don't. I don't. I just want to let you know that. Well, anybody who's watching the Facebook Live right now or who watches this on YouTube later, we want your votes. We want to know who's got the better beard, Jay or JK. You, you guys heard him here. Check him out. Yeah. Let us know. This is my COVID beard, guys. Vote for me. All right. Vote last, for JK. Last, my, my daughter did say that, that my beard actually makes the shape of a heart. Ah. <laughs> mm. I, mm. I don't know. We have to see what the world says. All right. All right. Yeah, we'll have to see All what right. that goes. Two more questions and then we're going to do a lightning round and then real, then we'll go into the, the more serious questions about the market. Uh, let's see here. Jay, if Hollywood was going to make a, a JK and Jay movie, what actor would play you and why? Oh, wow. What actor what would actor play me? Um, well, that's got to be... Uh, I mean, it, it's got... It's, it's got to be Lady Gaga's guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you talking about uh, Bradley Cooper? Yeah, Bradley, Bradley Cooper. Cooper all day. Uh, you know, it's funny, all my life, for whatever reason, uh, whether, you know, during Halloween or whatever, not, people always said that I had some kind of like a Hugh Jackman look to me. So, uh, you know, maybe I'll just go with Hugh Jackman. I don't know. All right. Bradley Cooper. <laughs> okay, Brad, Bradley Cooper, Hugh Jackman, if either of them are watching, because I'm sure they are. Please. We'd like, to, we'd like to hear what they're saying. All right, last go. question for you before lightning round. JK, you were quoted on video two weeks ago saying that you have the best back end. Jay? <laughs> Jay, do you agree with that? Or Jonathan, that was, do you want to Oh, that? man. Well, I did say we were close. Um, I don't know if we're that close. You know, I tell you what, I have played pickleball with him. <laughs> There's a, a sport, believe it or not. Uh, so he has a great backhand. I don't know about a back end, though. So, you know. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think that came into our support. You know, I got to give a little props out to Brittany for being such an amazing, consistent. I think it's you know, the key behind our team. And that's a great, great point with the back end. And I think I was working out and working on my back end as I was running up 17th Street Causeway four times. <laughs> um, but, you know, outside of, you know, road biking and tennis and pickleball and all the other things, I do what I can to get out and do, you know. Um, and boating, I love boating. Um, I think the key to it, though, is the fact the amount of time I put into our back end support within mm. the team you know Brittany is a huge um, counterpart of the team and she's able she's able to help us navigate and push through um, the services and getting all the details knocked out for our team to ensure that the buyers and sellers are getting um, the, the requirements and expectations that they have um, when doing business with us and that's what's important you know I think Brittany's been on our team for going on four years and at this point um you know this is all you know i i didn't have Brittany come in and have her just answer calls i i took her from answering calls to duplicating me just as though i duplicated myself into jay yeah. and the other team members and that's what i'm always trying to get is to bring i think that my ultimate intent and you know back in you know if your back end's not good your your front end's going to be horrible because you're going to have a lot of challenges and complaints. And that's, that's whether you're in the plumbing business, the AC business, the money management business. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife works for UBS and she runs a lot of the back end for UBS. And she's like a master at what okay. she does. 
And you know, we know other groups that have their backend support in the money world. And let me tell you, that's that are weak and they have it's constant headaches. Um, and and then you, you work on that whole time to value scenario where are we are we dealing with a lot of headaches because our back end's not doing the things they're supposed to do, yeah. or we have a streamlined steamrolled back end that just handles all issues, mm -hmm. overcomes all challenges, knows how to resource, knows how to figure out where to go to and connect when there's problems and, and, and also how she communicates, you know, is huge as well. All, all of us communicate, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah, definitely, huge. She, she stepped out of the, I mean, she's, I think she's probably more out of the light of an, of an administrative assistant into more of a team management, you know, personnel. I mean, yeah. when I came on, I told you, you know, we've been together for a long time, Jonathan and I, and, 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 and really it's kind of where he started to form sort of the idea of creating sort of the team JK model mm -hmm. was, you know, the Jonathan Keith team. Yeah. And then it was, a, then it was, I think it was Jonathan Keith and associates. And then it evolved to team JK. We went through at least three other admins yeah. before Brittany, you know, came along. Obviously it's probably better that we did because, you know, we got to learn what, what, you know, how to manage right. them, how they managed us, you know, you know, what we can, you know, what we can count on them for and, and, and vice versa. Yeah. But, you know, over the time, I mean, no one compares to. Well, and you know, I've, I've been in multiple businesses. I've owned multiple businesses um, outside of real estate. And I have to, to tell you, the one thing in South Florida that I've always been, I've, I've always underestimated is the work ethic. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I remember in Tampa, I used to work my tail off. And when I was growing up um, before I came over to Fort Lauderdale and I mean, I had, whoever I worked with or for during that time, I would do whatever and anything I could, you know, down in South Florida, it's a, it's a lot more challenging to, I don't know if it's because we just live in paradise <laughs> and, you know, people are just doing whatever they, they can to get through work to get to the beach or get to the bar or whatever it is. But, you know, the work ethic in South Florida has always been a challenge for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although I will say out of all the compliments we can give Brittany, I promise her, she's probably watching right now that we will come up with a better title for her than Jonathan's back end. <laughs> uh, That's and there it is. That's Huge good. shout out to Brett. We, we appreciate everything she does. Okay. Quick lightning round. And then let's talk about, let's talk some real estate. So you have two choices, pick the one that's best. You have no time to think about it. Here we go. Ready? Buccaneers or dolphins? Oh, Buccaneers. Okay. Gators or Hurricanes? Gators. Ohio State Buckeyes. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll, go with the Hurricanes. I'll go with the Hurricanes. All right. Apple or Android? Apple. Oh, Apple. Miami Beach or Fort Lauderdale Beach? Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. All day. Okay. Yeah. Netflix or Hulu? Netflix. Netflix. Jonathan and I are huge Ozark fans. Ozark. All Ozark. Day. All the way. Oh, all all the way. We're you're late to the, we're late to, we're late to the no, game. No, wait. No, wait. Wait, okay, wait, wait. Okay, Last okay. question. This is it. Ozark or Tiger King? Which one? This oh, is, this Ozark. Is, this is Ozark. Ozark. We're, we're hooked. Okay. We're hooked. Ozark. Ozark. <laughs> all right. Ozark. Yeah. Yeah, I can't do right. the Tiger King. There was like many, many nights I did not get to bed before three in the morning. Oh. Love Ozark. I'll tell you what, and I was, I was, I was the late bloomer when it came to Netflix. I have to admit it. You know, a lot of people have been watching Netflix for a long time. And uh, the one thing I think is so funny about Netflix is that as you're watching a show, especially one of the episodes, when they go to switch the other episode, you get the little bar at the bottom and it just kind of, it's kind of like, it kind of talks to you and it's, it automatically will switch to the new episode. And it, it was like anxiety trying to like rummage around on my couch, <laughs> trying to find the yeah. whole control clicker before Deposit. it turns. Cause, yeah, as yeah. As, Cause as soon as it goes to the next episode, you're you like, all right. I'm committed to another yeah. hour, so yeah. No, no, for sure. And you know, I you know, believe it or not, I know a lot of people probably say Jonathan brought, watches a lot of TV. I don't really watch that much TV. Mm. We just we just don't. And you know what? I'm fighting with Phoebe all the time about the main TV. I have a pretty big TV out in the living room, and that's like what we squabble with when when I actually kind of taking a notch down to start watching a little bit just to see what's going on. And she, she's like, no, this is my TV. I'm like, no, that's that. No, we have five other TVs in the house. This is my TV. No, 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 mommy. You know, and that's what I end up dealing with. So then, at the by that point, she's frustrated, and I'm like, okay, well, I would rather just move on and you know watch, look at my phone. You know, the phone's changed everything when it comes to TV for me. But yeah, Ozark, 
it's definitely, I, I was in the bloodline. I was in the um, Sopranos was my favorite. Um, besides those two, I, I wasn't hooked on a series where my time would just, you know, disappear because I couldn't, um, and I wasn't, you know, I didn't like being, um, I didn't like being tied to like being out somewhere and then say, oh, we got to get home to watch the series. That mm. just wasn't me, you know? So, but definitely when it comes to, when it comes to Ozark, I can't wait for the fourth season. We're, I still got a few more episodes in season three. That's a perfect segue for us, Jonathan. There's a real estate, there's a realtor character in Ozark, right? Right. There do you is. think it mimics, do you, do you guys, how do you feel about that? Does it mi yeah, she's mimic? Yeah, strong, what we're yeah she's a, I forgot her name over there. Um, I mean, but I, I will tell you that kind of like how Jay says that he's related to Hugh Jackman, I feel <laughs> related to, I feel very close to Jason Bateman. Oh, I mean, God. Decisions he's making, and like, <laughs> that's, that's me all day long. Oh, you know? man. I mean, I just love it. And just kind of like the, the look of exasperation, but not like saying anything. Oh, yeah, that is me all day long. All day long. That's got my name all over. I think Jason Bateman is doing an amazing yeah, job yeah, at, yeah, at Ozark because he's doing the production of it yep. and um, and then doing the acting. I And you know, a lot of people said like he's boring or whatever. I mean, that's his role. You know, I think that's, you know, he's business guy. You know, yeah, and um, so you know, I totally relate to him. Uh, not not that I do business like him, but <laughs> you know, we're not blowing up casinos over right, here. Right, right, right. But that will come up later, though, because we have a casino project I want to tell you guys about. Oh boy! All right. Well, speaking of business, um, I'd say there there's 25 agents on Team JK, and the biggest question that we're being asked the most right now is, should I buy a house right now? Mm. JK, what are your thoughts on that? So I think that that's a loaded question, but is my opinion. And you know where we're at is, uh, you know, rates are low, and that's like your standard. You're going to hear that hear that from every agent out there that's either doing business or not doing business. Um, I think that the if I was to tell you to buy a house today, or is it a good or bad idea? I think there's more to the equation. I think that we need to figure out what's going on in your life. Um, is there are you moving up? Are you moving down? What's the priority with the family? Um, is it schools coming in? Um, what What's happening financially? Do you have the amount of monies to be down, to put down where you're going to be able to navigate around some of the constrictions? Because obviously there are constrictions and that's not fair to not outlie, um, to not out, to, to, we got to tell the public, Hey, this is what's going on. I mean, the mortgage, mm -hmm. the mortgage game is being constricted aggressively. Um, so back to some of those questions, you know, we have buyers that are buying that are saying, Hey, Jonathan, I can't be in a house without a pool ever again, because I had my kids home and they drove me crazy. Um, I've had, you know, families that are in condos are like, Jonathan, we thought, we hit the jackpot because we got into a luxury condo and felt like we snuck by not having to pay the lawn guy, not having to pay the termite guy, not having to pay the pool guy, not having to pay the um, you know home maintenance and, and all that stuff. But now we're paying a maintenance fee at our condo association where all the amenities are shut down. And that that's horrible. We, we don't ever want to live like that ever again. We don't want to be cornered in that. Especially if, you know, what if Corona doubles up, you know, like they're saying that it's possible, you know, but, um, I think the, uh, the administration mentioned that earlier, it's been yeah. going on, you know, in the fall, we're going to see, you know, another round of this, um, and it could be worse. So there's a lot of challenges when it comes into buying. I think that, and, you know, also you don't know where a seller is at. We may have a seller that is the perfect home for you and they just got laid off. They need to sell where well, you'll end up getting the best deal with the home you wanted. I have, I have friends that are always like, Jonathan, when you find a great deal, let me know. Well, there's a challenge with that because I've got great deals all the time, but they're not places that those friends would actually live in. So, um, so a lot of different nuances to answering that question um, if you're putting minimal down, this is probably not the time to buy. I would probably mm -hmm. consider saving up a little more money 
and being in a stronger position. Now, if you're putting little money down, we may be able to negotiate the closing costs that you might not get later on down the road. Um, and you know, I'm not that crystal ball guy. I'm more of like a realistic scenario. First of all, we feel like, you know, you're going to see some inventory come up. There's going to be a lot of movement. There's going to be people coming out of the condo game. There's going to be com people coming from Northeast that just got stuck up there. They can't wait, can't wait till the borders open up and, till the, and when the stay at home comes out of New York. I mean, you better believe they are not happy. Mm -hmm. It's bad. I mean, it's really bad. So, dump, so let me dumpfell on that, Jonathan. Jay, jo uh, Jonathan mentioned that uh, he thinks that some of the folks from the, that are in condos right now right. might say they want to get out. Do you think that's going to create a vacuum? Or, I mean, tell me, what are your thoughts on the condo market? You know, bef before even any of this happened, we were already seeing, you know, obviously different areas uh, having a surplus. And one of the ones that has been really affected over the last year, even though appreciation has been going up, um, the condo market's been struggling um, just because, you know, we just have an over amount of surplus of, of properties on the market, which, you know, on the opposite side, we have a shortage in the single family home market. So that's why prices have been, you know, very strong for the seller market. I mean, you know, no one has a crystal ball, right? So, but what we do know, to Jonathan's point, uh, you know, more than 50% of the country was faced, you know, two weeks ago with 40 degree weather in some places of snowing out. So not a great place to sit in, uh, in a stay home order. Um, so I, you know, I would imagine that, you know, if, if people's personalities kind of dictate their actions, if they, if they kind of have, you know, sort of a look down the future and say, if I have to be in a situation and, you know, where do I want to be at? Um, a, I think being down in Florida is going to be a better option for them, right? But B, if people don't want to travel down here uh, and there are international buyers, maybe some Canadian buyers or international buyers that have uh, properties in the condo market, that they just don't have any plans to come here anytime soon, they might want to liquidate them pretty quickly. And, yeah. and unfortunately that could increase the amount of, 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 you know, properties on the market, um, you know, for the, for the, for the short run, at least for the next year. And that's going to drive pricing down. Now, one thing you have to remember too, is in this, you know, typically when you have a lot of property on the market um, you, you know, just the opposite, you don't have a lot of buyers and that's what kind of keeps, you know, sort of prices out of sort of where it's at. When you have more buyers on the market and less and less properties, uh, it keeps the it keeps the seller's market strong. And everybody's talking about the interest rates being so low right now. So you know, a, a, an opportunity for buyers to come into the market and maybe find a really good deal. Obviously, if they qualify, but we don't have a lot of inventory right now. So we might have a lot of buyers that come into the market, but not a lot of inventory. And it, that's that's kind of a mixed market, right? Usually, you have one or the other. So we're in kind of uncharted territory. So, if, you know, a lot of the analysts that we talk about, you know, the things that we do know for sure, uh, buyers that are going to come in the market are going to have to have higher qualifying, you know, uh, 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 you know, limitations, credentials. credentials, right? So for sure, if you're a buyer looking to buy sometime this year, you got to get your house in order. Um, it's not, you know, rates, uh, the, you know, loan to value is rates are going to go up. For, uh, limits are going to go up for sure. Uh, credit your credit limits are going to be, you know, have to be a higher value than they were at before. Um, and so that's, that's going to be, you know, we hear that from all the analysts, um, where the inventory is going to go, uh, right now, you know, we predict definitely the condo market is going to have a, a, a direct impact, right? Rental markets, the rental markets. So if you're an investor that, that, you know, really had a lot of investment properties and we're really, you know, really dependent on, uh, on Airbnbs and VRBOs right now, not looking good. Um, yeah, they'll just go annual. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, you know, that, that we see either people trying to go annual, but remember if they didn't buy that property for an annual right. type renter, either they're going to hold on it and take a loss and see right. if this bounces back or where you do have a lot of investors that have been contacting us kind of, you know, maybe kind of trimming the fat a little bit and putting some of their properties on the market. Right. Um, the other side, the other, the other thing I think is going to be interesting uh, when we kind of go through the summertime is remember, we're not like a, a, a trade market where, where, you know, stocks were up and stocks were down and everybody's either selling or buying. Right. So real estate cycles, it, it takes, a t it takes time to really kind of see where things are going. We've only been in, I mean, if you really think about this, I mean, I know it feels like we've been in like in, in this house for in our homes for like an eternity. We've only been doing this for like two months. I mean, really like when we got our first day of home order, I think it was like week one of, of March. We just hit, we're just getting ready to hit May. Right. We need to go through at least a, a 90 day cycle before we start to see where 
home right. prices and home are, are, are you kind of, you know, trailing down or trailing up any homes that you saw that took a drop, you know, most, you know, at least some of the data that we've seen is, is really a five or 10% drop. That might've been for a reason, right? Those people might've had to sell, right? They were moving out of town. They were moving across, you know, across state. Um, they were in a situation where they had to make, you know, a decision happen, whether through pain or, or pleasure for whatever the reason that was. Everybody else, I mean, I, we, we carry a lot of inventory in our team. There's a lot of our sellers that have not dropped their prices yet because we just don't know where it's going to go. So, yeah. you know, when you're talking about strength for buyers right now, I mean, yeah, we get in the conversations with buyers that think like, oh my gosh, we're going to get the world's best deal. You know, that's, it really depends on where you're looking. Um, yeah, and typically being on the east side, you have a stronger reserve of monies in place right. um, on the east side of, of the county. And typically with, I would say, you know, people are already prepared to, you know, pay and get into a position like this. Maybe not as much of a pandemic, but, you know, I mean, we have hurricanes, you know, we've got, yeah. we've had other issues in the past. And I think that, you know, especially on the buy side, you know, people bought. Anybody that bought from six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, you know, they put more monies down right. they, uh, uh, during that time. So the probability of them actually defaulting is um, is, is is definitely decreased yeah. compared to before 100%. the quarter crisis. And, and that's a great point, Jonathan's bringing it up, right? So think about you know if history, if past history dictates future, you know, future gains, right? The crash, when the crash happened back in, what was it, 06, 06, 07, if you bought right before then, and then the crash happened, obviously, you know, you were, you were hating life when it came to you know, making your real estate decision. They were up, you know, as of last, as of two months ago, they had made all their appreciation back on their, on their property. It took time, but it made every, so, yeah. so, you know, buying today and, and, you know, if you bought yesterday and you feel like, oh my God, I made the worst decision of my life. No. It's it, you know it, home values have went up over the that last year. That you were in home, you were in your home, right? right. <laughs> you know exactly. I mean, right. I, I'd rather I'd rather be in my own home, and you know we've you know we've enjoyed being in our situation in this pandemic, and we've made the best of it, and yeah. we've been able to you know swim in our pool. Well, I mean, there's a good portion of our neighborhood surrounds on the east side has pools, but that would not be fun if I didn't have a pool. You yeah. know, um, you know, with Phoebe, she loves to swim. Good question. All right. Good question. We so we're as we I thought this would happen. You guys have a great dynamic, and we're we're uh, <laughs> we're going a little bit longer than we thought we would. So we want to be able to get to Chris and uh, Jonathan. Have, we have some featured properties, but one one more two quick questions actually. Um, and let's see if we can. Uh, keep things a little bit tight, but real estate has been deemed an essential business um, with the shelter at home orders here in Florida. So that's obviously changed the way we do business, right? How much, how much of the changes or how many of the changes do you think that we've experienced are going to stick after? Is because So right now on Twitter, there's two topics that are trending and the lockdowns and keep the lockdowns in place. And it's about 50-50 in the, in the amount of people who are in support of either or. So right. to you guys, what do you think? I mean, we're, we're deemed an essential business, a mm -hmm. lot's changed. What yeah. do you think is gonna remain the same going into 2020? Well, I think um, you need to yeah, run with yeah. safety. Yeah. You know, safety is gonna be utmost. I was showing property yesterday and, um, you know, wear gloves and mask. And I think, you know, out of respect for the owners going into people's homes, it's just the right thing to do. I actually had a, a seller um, that was an agent. I was showing his property on the beach over in Lardo by the sea. He had texted me. He goes, hey, by the way, I noticed he, he was watching me on his camera. He was like, hey, I noticed you showed my property. I really appreciated you um, putting your, your mask. And I saw, did, were you wearing gloves? Absolutely. And um, he goes, that's fantastic. And I even responded. I'm like, you know what? I, I didn't even touch anything. I had... I used my shirt with my gloves to open the door. I just didn't want any bl any blowback with um, with showing his property, and I just wanted him to feel comfortable with coming back to his home and not feeling like he's going to go and and disinfect the place, which I'd probably do anyways. You know, yeah. we're not allowing people in the house for the most part. You know, you know, Derek. You know, definitely, this has opened. I think our eyes to 
you know, kind of a fight or flight scenario. Um, safety is going to be always in the forefront now of people's minds, as for, at least for the, certainly towards the end of this year. Um, ultimately, I think that, you know, the precautions that the, the, the city and the, the state are going to put in place, you know, are either going to be stretched uh, and people are going to abuse them. Uh, but I think in, as far as for us in real estate, I think that, you know, it forced us to kind of open up ideas on how to use yeah. virtual tours as a, as a new tool for us mm -hmm. to enhance. I think our, our, you know, at the end of the day, That's we brought are, us to team JK TV. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and, you know, we are, con we're our contact sport, right? So we're going to eventually have to have a warm body walking through a house yeah. at some point in time. Um, uh, but I think that people have, you know, with new technologies, Matterport systems, which is a technology where you can actually take a an actual walk through uh, the property as if you're actually in the home looking in a three dimensional, you know, view. Um, obviously, the uh, the enhancements of video tours that really showcase the home in, in, in a fun light. You know, there's a lot of ways that people can get a good idea of the property. Um, we deal a lot of this with people from out our town buyers that, that look at the properties first online and then they actually, you know, make a trip down here when they single it down. Yeah. It actually becomes sort of the new norm now where people, you know, are less about jumping in their cars and stuff and maybe look through things virtually and then ultimately, you know, limit it down to one or two. But there's yeah, still that's, that's big, too. You know, what's interesting about that, Jay, is, you know, based upon the fact that we're out of the Miami Board of Realtors, a 50, a 52,000 realtor board, um, I'm seeing and in, in, in the, the contacts that we've got, the leads that we've got on our properties, we have people calling all day and we're capturing and defining where they're coming from. And the international business that we've gotten just out of being within the Miami Board of Realtors, those individuals had asked, they were, they were wondering, there was like one or two out of the group that we had, that were wondering if we were utilizing the same procedures as they're doing in Canada and over in Europe. That was the, yeah. uh, that was a couple of calls. And I also got a call from Brazil. They wanted to see if they did come in, once they were able to come in, you know, what that, what that's gonna be like, are they gonna be, in an awkward position with the realtor when they're showing and what are the sellers, um, how are the sellers allowing the showings? Um, I've got actually two queued up buyers that have been waiting um, for one of our listings in Lighthouse Point uh, this coming up weekend and getting the sellers in check and positioning them to be in their, in their right mindset as they're leaving the house and then bringing in buyers to show the property is a huge safety ordeal. Um, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, we just got to be very precautious. Thanks, guys. Hey, uh, would you mind maybe just sticking around? I'm gonna. We need to let Chris do a, a oh, yeah. of properties. A couple of come on in, properties. Chris. We, hey, have, Chris. we have another question for you. So, Chris, can you turn your uh, camera on? And then, Brittany, if we could um, just bring the property slides up. Chris, I know you have some place to be, so I will make this what? as quick as possible. Um, today we're going to be talking about 2201 Wilton Drive, which is a commercial office building uh, right on Wilton Drive, and 1108 Northeast 3rd Street, which is a rental property. Chris, can you take it away um, and tell us a little bit about both of those properties, starting with 2201 Wilton Drive? Okay, 2201 Wilton Drive, Bob and I have it listed and we're servicing it. It's called the Zigzag Building and it's totally renovated with signature designs got 12 uh, places. It's got units in it. It's got 12 parking places plus a handicap um, and like enhanced security. It's in the heart of Wilton Manors. Mm. It's the very entertainment district, the best place to be in Wilton Manors. Nice. Nice. So that's one one spot per, per unit, correct? Correct. For parking? Yes. Our very own title companies there too. Yes. Yeah, look at the design work in this yeah, place. Yeah, it's beautiful. No, it's yeah. cool. And, and and yeah, so anybody that's working with commercial uh, retail, this could be a great opportunity to be. Oh, I mean, yeah. Wilt Manors is on oh. fire. Is that, you know? Chris, is that one big open space or can it be subdivided or would the landlord be open to subdividing it at all or no? Oh, it's all individual spaces. Oh, okay. There's uh, two big spaces and the title company's got one. And mm -hmm. then it's a lot of uh, executive suites. Fantastic. Outside of Fort Lauderdale, the two hottest cities are Pompano and Wilt Manors right now for um, for both commercial and residential, in my opinion. And it's easy to show. Just call us. Be a good WeWork yeah, stuff. Good yeah. stuff. 
Yeah. 56, 58, 56 Southwest 39th Way. So this is new construction. You'll see the front of this house, 2019 mm. built. Nice. So this was built last year. The owner spent a substantial amount of monies and upgrades specifically in the kitchen. Oh, look at this the is probably a bare minimum, 50 to $60,000 kitchen. You'll see the guitar out off to the top left. So those of you that can't wait to get back to the casino to roll the dice, you won't be gambling on this spot because it is the place to be. If you're, I mean, my favorite is six by six and side by side on the dice. If you're playing craps <laughs> and you can literally throw your dice and hit the guitar over there at the Hollywood hard rock. <laughs> so it's a three, look at this kitchen. Oh, wow. oh. I don't, I don't know multi-million dollar homes that have a kitchen like this, the ceiling sky high. It's only a one story. So you can see the ceilings. I think are right at about 11 feet. You can see the Euro exhaust straight ahead there off to the kind of straight to the left there. Um, that's a, a mega island um, that's probably one of the bigger islands they see out there where you can come in and just eat and enjoy your breakfast. And um, so all the appliances um, have a seven year warranty, by the way. Here's your master. Um, so you can see the master is just everything is top notch. The price on this property, by the way, is six ninety nine new construction. This is twenty seven hundred square feet. That's great. Six hundred ninety nine thousand. It's in a gated community with eight homes in there. I was just going to say, Jonathan, a, question on yeah. that. Is that is that all new construction neighborhood or is are, are, are the homes? Yeah, that neighborhood was all new construction. So it's an eight unit new construction home. There's your pool. Beautiful. It's got some uh, uh, some LED lighting in the pool, um, double fans, as you can see, ready to entertain and party. And, um, and I'll tell you, this property is absolutely stunning. You can mm. see where that was like the beige decor on the outside and they had like the modern decor white and grays on the inside. Mm -hmm. So it gives you kind of the vision on the differences from, um, from, uh, from, a, from a visual and color, um, <laughs> color palette. That's beautiful. And uh, so yeah, so 699, three bedroom, two and a half bath, double car garage, and you're a Dice's throw to the hard rock. <laughs> Dice's throw. We have to talk about that. That's a whole other subject. All <laughs> right, right, right. All right. Team's doing lots of business. Uh, we got 39 active listings right now um, and $30 million uh, in listings right now. 1.9 million closed in the last two weeks. That's pretty impressive. Even through a pandemic, business is being done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's great. See the stats here. Yeah. We actually been, um, you know, we queued up a lot. We had a lot of business queued from the beginning of the year that's finally closing. So it's going to be, this is where, this is where the sheep and the wolves are defined going mm -hmm. forward. This is, this is pretty much that here's the line. Now that the gates are open are starting to open as to who is going to survive who is going to do the things they're supposed to be doing and marketing the seller's properties. Um, we have, I can't tell you how many countless systems that we utilize to ensure that it's not just rolling the dice on 39th way and praying that his property sells off the MLS. We we have our own third party marketing uh, company that ties into all of our social media. So a lot of people always wonder, well, John, what's Jonathan's recipe? What, how has he moved this or do this much property and run this many agents and why do they stick around? Well, that's because we are operating with a checklist and systemizing everything. So it's still a hands-on game, but we're ensuring that everything is getting checked. Everything's getting finished. Everything's getting closed at all potential capacity. Mm. Well said. Well Thanks, said. Jonathan. It's a great team. We all love working together. Um, I think this was a really fun episode because I, I just think it was really fun. What do you guys think? <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's some good oh, zingers yeah, no, in there. Some good zingers. Yeah, the team's doing great. Derek, you're doing a great, great job producing the show. Um, yeah. Team JKTV had to had to come out. We push, 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 and you made it happen, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I really appreciate it. And thank uh, so you. Shout yeah, out for to our Facebook Live. You know, it's thanks for chiming in. You know, you guys keep us in mind. You know, our goal and focus is to get the job done. 
you know, a lot of times we're not always the first on the scene when it comes to, uh, you know, issues and challenges and selling a home. But I will tell you this, we're always the last. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, Jay, how do, yeah. how do people get in touch with you if they want to work with you? You know, easy, uh, you know, send me, a, send me a text or call on my cell, obviously, 310-713-9090. Uh, or you can uh, send me a, a, an email to J, J Y period, my last name, Granary, G R A N I E R I, at compass.com. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Chris, how do we get in touch with you? Um, you can call Jonathan and he'll let you know. No. 954 608 9516 is my cell. I've got it with me all the time. Or it's my name, Chris. Dot Everett at compass.com. And not your tennis Thank player. You. <laughs> JK. It's funny that Chris you. mentions that though. You know, our team is full blown, you know, wide open for you to utilize, you know, any of the different team members. Um, each of them have their own specialty and their own caliber of, of going about doing, you know, business and they match up with different buyers and sellers in the market. And that's what we try to do. We, you know, Jay loves doing luxury um, and him and I team up on commercial. Chris, does, Chris and I do a substantial amount of commercial. Um, you know, with Derek, Derek loves working in you know that that center core of Fort Lauderdale, um, and he's starting to kind of ramp into the into the luxury game as well. Um, very proud of Derek, um, and and Team JK is a huge yeah. for for him as well. And and the rest of the team, we have multifamily professionals on the team where you know they specifically focus on doors. And counting the amount of doors for you know price per door more so than square footage, even though that's what's going to come up in value and and what kind of income's coming in as well for individuals who have a primary home but want to utilize you know going into the next investment. We have people that have a full time job, um, buyers and sellers that have full time jobs, but they're investing in real estate as a secondary income for them, and it just makes total sense. And uh, and being able to have you know, streamline professionals that focus in that industry or in that sector of our industry is huge. Thank you. Yeah, all, all, the, all the plugs. Wait, somebody's speaker doesn't. Okay, JK, how do we reach you? Of course, you guys can always reach me. I'm always open for anything. And, and to be openly direct, my focus is more so to just help. So if you're in a situation that you're questioning or wondering what kind of um, what kind of scenario you're in? Feel free 954-709-9742. I'll give you the advice that I could possibly give you for you to maximize your situation, whether you're doing business with me or not. Um, you know, there's a lot of you. You know, the buyers and sellers have friends in the business, or you know, they've got somebody they've done continuous business, and but they still want to have some sort of you know advice or thought process in making a move. That's where I like. I love to play, and then obviously, if we can earn your business, I love that too. All right, and Team JK at Compass dot com nine five four seven zero nine nine seven four two. All right, I can be reached at nine five four seven zero six six nine five zero. Derek dot Lee at Compass dot com, and that's D E R E K. Um, next week, we at two o'clock Wednesdays. Every two o'clock, er, every Wednesday at two o'clock, we have Team JK TV live. We're going to hear from Mike Malloy from PRMG Mortgages. We'll probably hear uh, the answer to the question um, about hey, how Jay become, became the most interesting real estate guy in the world um, <laughs> and some other surprises might, for everybody. Might have, to, might have to have a full session on that for, for that. He might have to grow his beard a little longer. <laughs> All right. And don't forget to uh, uh, check us out at teamjktv.com. Um, our Facebook page, everything went live. Uh, there's, there'll be some watch parties after this. We have a YouTube channel. We look forward to hearing from everybody and we'll see everybody. Yeah, next guys. Week. Thanks for tuning in. Awesome. All right. See you soon. Okay, guys. Take care. Thanks. Bye. See you guys.